And what this does, right, is it takes data from PDF and it turns it turns all of that data basically into Markdown. It passes it to OpenAI, to GPT-40. It's the first chapter of the Count of Monte Cristo because we're having fun with it. What we have here is an executive summary. Um, some key points about Edmund Dantes. It's going to send that to Slack and we're going to see that summary come through. Hey, it's Matt with Replit here. Today I'm going to show you how to integrate Slack into your Replit apps. Um, and a few sample applications that I've built that you'll be able to take with you after watching this video uh, and continue building with Replit Agent, continue building with Replit Assistant to do really whatever you'd like. But first, let's talk about Slack. The hardest part about what I'm going to share with you today is configuring Slack API and then plugging it into your app. But we've made some really great improvements um, on the Replit side. Uh, that makes that simpler than ever. I will share with you exactly how to do that so you can follow this video end to end. But I'll also show you some apps that I pre-built that you'll be able to take with you um, and continue iterating on. So first, let me share the first one with you. This one's a bit more uh, simple, maybe a bit more funny um, and uh, light. But first, we have uh, the ability to generate a dad joke. So built this entirely with Agent. Um, this one's pretty straightforward. We have a topic. So we do something like rock climbing, uh, and we're going to generate a joke. This passes it to OpenAI on the back end. Um, <laughs> I, you know, all these, I didn't say they were good jokes. I just said that they were jokes. Um, and then from there, we can click send to Slack. Two things are going to happen. First, we're going to log our jokes in a database so that you can see the recently sent jokes. And then second, we're going to send them to our Slack channel. Um, so pretty straightforward. Uh, again, I think that this is a trivial example, but it's fun. Um, number one. And number two, you could imagine uh, a, a pattern here that's a bit more complicated, right? Maybe you have a report that you need to summarize. You have CSVs that you receive from a vendor. And you're doing the same thing over and over again, where you're like parsing this thing, copying data, pasting data, uh, or your team's doing that, right? And you really just want to build an internal tool or build a web page where somebody can go drop this thing in, um, have it analyzed, and then shared. So you're taking data, you're changing it, you're summarizing it, you're generating it. Um, and then you're sending it, you're disseminating it to a group of people. And that's what our internal tools here, this is what we're, we're doing with tools like this. Um, so maybe taking this step further from a dad joke, I'll share my second example with you. Uh, I have uh, a PDF summarizer here. And what this does, right, is it takes data from PDF. We're going to use a new library from Microsoft. So uh, that can accept PDFs, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, text, Markdown, and it turns it turns all of that data basically into Markdown. It does the same thing. It passes it to OpenAI. Um, it passes it uh, to GPT-40. Um, we're going to summarize it and then pass it to Slack. So now we're getting a bit more advanced. Okay, maybe somebody's sending us reports, so we want to summarize that, share it with our team, et cetera. Uh, let me show you how this one works. Basically, I'm going to grab a PDF. Um, it's the first chapter of the Count of Monte Cristo because we're having fun with it. It's going to upload the document convert it uh, to Markdown, right? This is getting a PDF, um, and then it'll analyze it and summarize the content, uh, and then hopefully we can pass that to Slack. So what we have here is an executive summary, um, some key points about Edmund Dantes and uh, you know what's going on in uh, this very uh, adventurous first chapter. Um, and again, we can click Share on Slack. It's going to send that to Slack, and we're going to see that summary come through formatted exactly as we want. I want to point out that this integration isn't one way, right? It's not just writing. We can also read data from Slack channels. So if you have people talking about things, you want to pull data through, summarize it, make changes to it, write it somewhere else. This works for that as well. Um, but now that I've showed you what I've built, and you can get the link to both of those in the description, I want to talk about how to configure this app, because I think that's really the hardest uh, part when you're building with Slack. The first thing I want to point out is that I'm using a sandbox environment. That's not a prerequisite. You can do this wherever. But if you're building something for work um, or if you're building something on your company's data, it's probably nice to make sure it works <laughs> before you like start reading and writing messages to channels. Um, so I would highly recommend either using a private channel for testing or uh, spinning up your own sandbox environment. I'll show you how to get channel info and how to do all that stuff in the video. Um, but the first thing you're going to want to do is head to the Slack API overview page. Um, and head to your apps. And so what we'll do is we'll create a new app. Um, I'm going to provide the manifest for the app that I create. So when I create this app, you'll be able to create one with the same information and scopes. So that might kind of expedite your own process of creating Slack apps. But I'm going to choose from scratch. So you can also um, 
do the same thing. And we'll call this like Matt's uh, great app. So if you use the manifest, now you have an app called Matt's great app until you change it. And I'm going to select the coolest sandbox, which is the name of my sandbox. So now we have an app created. The way that uh, the way that Replit works when it generates these Slack apps, we can probably go back um, and see exactly what happened when I was chatting with Agent. Um, is so I built this with OpenAI, right? Uh, and Slack, we get prompted for our OpenAI API key, and we get prompted for a Slack bot token and a Slack channel ID. So. The reason that uh, Replit needs a bot token and channel ID is so that when it sends this request, it can authenticate to Slack, or if it needs to pull messages from Slack, it can uh, authenticate and pull those into the environment. Um, the same way that you know, if we want to use OpenAI, we need an API key. Uh, so what we're going to do on this Slack page is configure uh, our Slack app to interact with our application. And to do that, we have to give it permissions to do what I just described. So if I go to OAuth and permissions, this is like really the page that we're going to stay on when we're um, creating these scopes and, and whatnot. And we're going to need to give the bot, our Slack bot, permissions to do stuff. So when I click uh, OAuth scopes, right, uh, we're going to say write. I want to allow it to um, write chats, right? Like it's going to be in a channel and it needs to be able to like write chats to that channel, right? That, that makes sense. I also want to be able to uh, like maybe read uh, messages in the, in the the channels that it's a part of. Um, so I would search read, and then I don't even know <laughs> channels read right. So this is like reading uh, information about public channels, um, channels uh, right invites chat write public send messages to channels the app isn't a member of. Now I don't have to add the the app as a member to the apps uh, to the channel rather that I'm using, so that probably sends saves us a step. Now these apps that I'm building are pretty simple, so I'm going to leave the permissions the scopes pretty simple. It's best practice to only use scopes that you need, but if I was like reading data from specific uh, messages in the channel, I'd probably need to add some more scopes. I'll leave that up to you. I'll also drop a link to the Slack docs um, in the description of this video, so you can learn a bit more about what scopes you would need to add if you're trying to do advanced stuff. But since we have the bot token scopes configured, um, we should be done uh, with like the um, like configuration for the app. We need to install the app into our um, workspace. Again, if you work at a company or if you're trying to do this in a Slack you don't own, you might have to get permission to do this. Um, that's why I'm using a sandbox. Um, and you're gonna get a bot user OAuth token. This is the part of the video where I say, this token will have been deleted by the time you see this video, so don't try and steal my token. Um, so I'm gonna copy this, uh, and we're gonna head back to Replit, right? Um, and we can go to Secrets. So you can see when we're, when we're configuring this app, we, Replit should give you the following prompt. It should say, hey, uh, if you go into Agent and you just type in a new prompt, it's gonna say, you need to give us a bot token, you need to give us a Slack channel ID and an open API key. Uh, and we're going to do that. So um, again, uh, we're going to go to our Slack bot token here. I'm going to click edit, and then I'm just going to drop in that new secret. We'll click update secret. Um, channel ID is the same. The way you get a channel ID is you go to Slack, and you go to your channel. You can really click anywhere. And then you go down in the bottom, and you get a little channel ID hiding out there. So you copy that, and you just go back to Replit, and you drop it in. Um, Typically, if you edit things like environment variables within a REPL, you need to stop and rerun the REPL for certain frameworks. But if I go to WebView, um, so let's let's see if we we were able to do this. We'll make a joke about baseball because uh, I used to play baseball. Um, <laughs> gee, these are really bad. I'm sorry, <laughs> but we'll send that to Slack. Now let's see what happens. Uh, basically, we get a new dad joke alert. Note that uh, this is Matt's great app, the app we were sending it before. <laughs> Note that this is Matt's great app. The app we were sending from before was just Matt's app. So we hooked up the new app to use this, uh, the, the app we just created, and it has all the necessary permissions. If you don't have the necessary permissions, you're gonna get an error in Replit. Um, so just to recap what we did, right? Um, I have a few apps that I created. You can click fork on these applications if you do. You'll probably need to recreate the database under the Postgres tab. 
Um, and then you'll need to configure the secrets, which should flow through from the newly created database. But it's very likely that you'll also have to add in um, your Slack channel ID, your Slack block token, and your open AI API key. Once you do that, you can head to the Slack API page, create a new application, follow the steps we just configured, should be good to go for sending messages to Slack. And whether you fork the templates I just provided from you, or if you go to the Replit homepage, right, and click Slack, which just drops the integrate with Slack messaging uh, text into the agent prompt. So really all you have to do is mention Slack. You'll be building with Slack with one of our templates that are pre-configured for you to use uh, and come super simple directly out of the box. Again, I'm Matt with Replit. This has been how you can use Slack in your Replit agent apps and how you can uh, implement sending to Slack, reading Slack messages in just a couple minutes. But until next time, peace.